What up, guys? Welcome to the podcast today. We are going to get into a um, couple questions on competitions today uh, that were asked recently. So, um, you know, the main one is dealing with the fear of injury before competition. Um, we'll talk about injuries into the gym as well. So, again, it could be useful for even if you're competing or if you're not competing. Uh, but I know that a lot of people, one of the things people worry about is the intensity of competitions. And they're like, well, I don't want to get injured in one of those situations. And so we'll get into that. And again, a couple other topics surrounding competitions and injury. Um, subjects uh, related to jiu-jitsu as always thanks to our sponsors for helping make this podcast happen if you guys have not done so already i encourage you to try out uh C cbd in some form i encourage you to try it out um, my personal favorite as far as companies that make it is charlotte's web that's why i was talking about it the other day i said that you know again they are a sponsor of the podcast or a sponsor of me but i also chose that me and Eugene chose that for the podcast because they make a good product and it's a product that I feel comfortable sharing with other people. Cause again, a lot of you guys that listen to this podcast are my students. And then some of you guys that aren't my students, I compare, I sort of consider you in my categoric, uh, sort of your category, sorry, this is the way you're placed in my brain. You're with my students. Um, and I, I sort of think of you in that, that manner. And so I wouldn't want to share stuff that's crap. And so they make a really good product. Um, it's one that's very rep reputable. They uh, are a company with a lot of integrity. And so again, if you want to check out their products, try to or go to their website at charlesweb.com and you can try out whatever you want to. And you can save 20% using the promo code jujitsu20 for 20% off. One of the things in case you guys are curious, and if you don't know this, um, I know a lot of people are worried about getting tested for stuff. Uh, that's one of the worries about CBD because being tested, if you, you know, you piss, as people say, piss hot, um, it can be a problem for you. One of their new products is called the daily sports edge. And that is, uh, NSF certified sport, which means that if you were a, in an organization that was tested by USADA, USADA would say, here is a supplement that you can take and you will be safe from testing. You won't, you won't test positive, which is pretty, it's a pretty big deal because USADA is pretty strenuous. Now I don't know the, the testing regulations and things like that, that you're involved with, but that said, um, they're pretty, pretty strenuous. And so it's a really, it's a really cool product that they have now where they've kept, um, a lot of the different sort of, um, compounds that are associated with CBD inside of it, uh, that they haven't been stripped because a lot of times if they take, if it's THC free, they have to strip a lot of the stuff that can be useful to you out of it. They kept all that in there and they've still removed the THC to the point where you're not going to be, um, essentially testing as if you have THC in your system. So super cool. So check it out, do your research on it to make sure. Um, but I know that that's been a real popular one with a lot of our people that are in like law enforcement and stuff like that, that mm -hmm. have been trying it out now. Um, so give it a try and check it out. Um, and again, you can use their, use the promo code jujitsu 20 to tw save 20% off the order on whatever you buy from their website at charlesweb.com. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Epic Roll. If you guys have never checked out Matt's website, just get on his website. Right now, go do it. I mean, if you're driving, do it now. If, if you're driving, don't do it. Because um, I don't want you to get into a wreck because you wanted to check out a new gi. Um, but again, assuming that your wife or significant other is not going to kill you if you get another gi or rash guard or some shorts or another jiu-jitsu t-shirt, <laughs> um, then check out his website at epicrollbjj.com. Matt is a jiu-jitsu practitioner who's on the mat sweating and busting his butt just like the rest of us. And he makes really cool stuff that's high quality and it's got great designs. I paired up with him, teamed up with him before to do some spe some special order rash guards, which I will be doing in the near future. So keep your eyes out on that. We'll be doing some shorts and rash guards in, in the upcoming future. Uh, it's the stuff that I wear when I compete. And uh, I'm going to be doing my gym rash guards and shorts with him as well because I like the stuff that he produces. It feels good. It's good, good quality. It holds up. And he generally does good designs that, to me, they're, they're like, it's just enough. I don't know how you guys are. I I'm funny about this stuff. I don't want to, I don't need like the, you know, uh, for uh, comparison back in the day at Hardy shirts were super popular and they had so much mm. crap all over them. Never liked them. It's too much. I want something very simple. That's just me. I, I like simplicity and I like just that where it just less is more sometimes. I'm more of an affliction guy myself. Yeah, you know? I know you, I know you yeah. are. That's right. And he had those, uh, I bet you had those, those jeans with all the, I did not have the jeans, those rhinestone jeans with the crap on them. Unfortunately, I missed that boat, <laughs> but I did have like a, I think I like a Robbie Lawler shirt or something. Yeah. Well, you know, at least it was related to fighting and you were yeah. a fan, you know, like you like, who, who did? Well, yeah. Robbie and I did jujitsu and I was like, yeah. and I like the, you know, the UFC and stuff. So of course. Um, but, but again, if you guys want to check out some of his stuff, he's got a lot of cool stuff on his website. I would check it out at 
uh, epicrollbjj.com. The promo code is jujitsu, and you'll save 15% off the order with whatever you get. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Manscaped. If you guys are, if you guys know a man in your life that needs to step up his grooming game, or you are a man who needs to step up his grooming game, then you need to check out Manscaped. I recently just got one of my black belts. He just grew out a, he had a wily beard. Um, Matt, yeah. Did you get him? Uh, I did. I took him with me. Yeah. I saw. So basically, you know, because it's one of those things where if you've never had like, if you've never been, it's one of those things where back in the day, I feel like people of our generation, it's like this thing where it was. You know, we grew up in the the era where grunge and stuff was popular, and people were just disheveled and whatever. <laughs> and if you were if you were like really taking care of yourself and really grooming yourself, it was almost considered that you were being effeminate. Whereas back in the day, like I remember looking at pictures of my grandfather, call it Metro. You call it, it was me- Metro. Metro right? was back in the day. You were either you were either gay or Metro, right? Huh. So we're like we're not doing that, you know. And then, but then you look back at the old pictures, like my grandfather's picture. I remember my grandfather would dress sharp. You know, suit and his hair is all done. You know, it's like all those things came back because uh-huh. now you're looking at a lot of the haircut styles and yeah. like you could have been in like some guy in World War Two. You know, your haircuts is the exact same same. You know, but anyway, sort of off topic. But I took him and I was got a got his beard trimmed. I was like, look, you've never had a beard before, and his beard was all wild. I almost thought about doing a video where, you know, how those people will do before those... and after. Well, no. So I almost like wanted because you know you know what videos really annoy me. You ever see those videos where people like they they go, hey guys. Uh, I see this homeless person here. Hey, man, do you want $100? I just want to give you this home with this $100. Look at me, guys. I'm giving a homeless person $100. Aren't I cool? You know, I, I just yeah, feel yeah. like it's just like it's just pure virtue signaling. You know, it's like, look, if you want to give a guy 100 bucks, give him 100 bucks mm-hmm. and be cool with it. You know, like I, I do all kinds of really generous stuff, but I don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I do it because I like doing it. it. makes me feel good. But I don't want to talk about it. It's, not, yeah. it's nobody's business. And I don't want this person to feel... Nobody likes to have to, to take something like that. You know, yeah. They'd rather do do for themselves. Mm. So to me, it's, it's disingenuous. It's just right. like, I'm going to monetize this online and make some money. And I'm going to look <laughs> look how cool I am. Here's the 100 bucks, bro. You know, <laughs> hey, do you want a hamburger? Give me your homeless person. So, and so with Matt, I, was, I almost <laughs> almost made a joke like, hey, guys, I found this homeless guy out there. <laughs> you know? And, but, uh, but so anyway. <laughs> And it's funny too because we took Matt into the barber shop and I was like, I know, like, see that man? He's he, he's a tall, kind of silly looking guy. That guy will kill everyone in this room. It's like right. he's he's he'll 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 choke you with his legs, and the last the last thing that you will smell is his underwear because <laughs> he's got a good triangle choke. Um, but again, uh, he, he got his beard trimmed. Now he can then say, okay, this is what a good beard trim looks like. Yeah. Now you can replicate this. Yes. Um, you know, again, and so. That said, you know he can he can step up his game, and if he needs one, actually, I think I got an extra trimmer, give a little trimmer, step up his uh, his grooming game. But again, right. if, if you guys are a man in your life, or if you're you, if you are a man, you are a man in your life. But if you know a man, or you are a man who needs to step up their grooming game, I encourage you to check out Manscape.com. Uh, they make really good products, high quality stuff. Everything's sort of it's a premium product. You're, you're it's not just uh it's not junky. I've had, gosh, I've had that stupid trimmer. It's not stupid, but I just say it that way. Yeah. Because it's almost like you say that for something that's like impressive. Darn trimmer. Like I've been using it for several years. It works fine. It works great still. And the darn charge lasts. Yes. For, God, it feels like forever. I rarely have to charge the thing. I charge it and set it back. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive because I feel like most stuff that you get, with it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel solid. The charge doesn't last with the, those like rechargeable stuff. It just whatever, and it's it's a good product. That is nice. And so I like their stuff, and I've been using their stuff for several years. And you know, again, with their trimmers, the trimmers are awesome. Also, their colognes and their soaps and their body washes, all that stuff smells amazing. Um, it has a really good, clean sort of, for lack of a better term, manly smell. You know, I guess we're in a world where it's kind of hard to say what what is manly, what's yeah, not manly. No. To me, it smells manly. It's fluid, bro. It's <laughs> to just me, fluid. If 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 my my wife smelled like that, I'd be like, hey, "What's going on? Where you been?" You know, it's like <laughs> I would. You know, I mean, I, I, to what's me, up? It's to me, it's like it's, <laughs> you've been. Be, well, I guess she's been downstairs using my my, my body wash, but <laughs> in the shower. But uh, no, it, it's it's really good stuff. Without like me, it. you've been using my manscape body wash. What is wrong with you? So, if you guys want to check out their stuff, manscaped.com and the uh, the sort of the offer to Jujitsu podcast listeners is Jujitsu 20, and that gives you 20% off the order plus free shipping. 
It's a solid deal on some of their products. Check them out at manscaped.com. Also, guys, if you want to support the podcast directly, you, you can do so by going to Patreon at patreon.com slash the Jujitsu podcast, uh, where we have a bunch of exclusive content collected over the years for you to get into. So, again, that's patreon.com slash the Jujitsu podcast. And last but not least, if you guys want to get our daily or my daily email newsletter that I send out almost daily, you can get it and get some exclusive free Jiu-Jitsu resources sent to you afterwards by signing up at jujitsu.net slash join, J-O-I-N. So, guys, with that said, let's uh, let's get into today's podcast. So the question that we that we're answering today, because that's what we're going off of, is a question about what do you do about the fear of being injured in a competition? So, you know, got a guy who wants to compete, but he's afraid because he doesn't want to get injured. Because, you know, what ends up happening is, you know, if you if you go around on the internet for long enough, you will see a video, especially in jiu-jitsu, you'll see, like, there was one recently um, from the Nogi World. Oh, the, guy's leg. the guy's leg got <clears throat> ripped. Well, the, first of all, it fractured. I mean, it was a spiral fracture, but the other thing was the screaming. The dude was like, started just like screaming. It was horrific. I, I was like, okay, I've seen enough. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen enough of this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was rough. Yep. And terrifying. So, right. And so that, and here's the thing, this is something I always think about. You have to be careful with what you, what you allow to be input into your brain, because here's an issue. If you've never been around a lot of competitions, then you could watch those videos. And it, it, the thing is, is like on the internet, you're not going to see the average, the 99.9% of the matches that are don't end up in horrific injuries because that's not going to get any views. It's not going to get any likes, not going to get any attention. What you're going to see is, oh my God, look at that guy got slammed on his neck or something like that. Or he, he got broke. Like, let's post that, you know, and they post these horrific stuff. I don't like that stuff. Like I, I can't stand watching it. And so you see that. And if you've never been around competitions, you can get a skewed view of what is what the reality of the situation is. It's like, for instance, if you were to go online and just look up stuff, you would have a skewed view of what the day to day life is like for most people, because what's going to be posted really bad stuff. So kidnappings and murders and fights and all this stuff. So you would think by watching the Internet that if you walked outside and again, maybe depending on where you live in the, the world, maybe this is, is what it's like. But for, you know, most of us at least live in the United States in the Western world, right? You walk outside, things are fine. You know, I can walk down the street and I'm not going to do anything to me, right? Look, some, some neighbors say hello and stuff, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's the reality. But if I was to sit there and look on the internet, that's what I see. Excuse your view. And you can even look at the statistics, right? It's like, well, oh, well, crime isn't as bad in most areas in this yeah. area, but But the internet's not telling me that. So that said... You know, if you haven't competed a lot, then you could have this view that injuries are going to just be horrific in competitions, whatever. But the reality is most like I'm telling you from my competition experience, and this is I've been competing in some form since I was 15 years old. So we're talking 22 years in wrestling and jujitsu combined and MMA, mixed martial arts fighting. My worst injuries have always come in training. I mean, it makes sense, right? We spend 99 percent of our time training. We don't spend that much time competing or, or fighting, right? And in competition, we spend all our time training. That's where the injuries are going to happen most often. Sure, you can have some one-offs in competition, but most of the time, you don't have them. Um, it just doesn't happen. You know, you, you mean, again, I'm saying it does, it does happen for some people, but for most people, it just doesn't happen. Most of their injuries come from training. Right. Um, you know, then there's issues with like in training, you overtrain and you got your body gets weakened down and then all of a sudden you tear a ligament or a, um, a tendon you know, you, you tear a muscle, you tweak something. I mean, you get those injuries. That's the kind of stuff. Now in a competition, what a lot of times you'll probably feel afterwards is that you have tweaks, you have like pull some muscle pulls and stuff like that. And you just generally feel like you were in a car wreck, like your whole body is just sore sometimes, but you don't have those long lasting, like I got to go get under the knife cut. Now that's not for everybody. Some people have had those, but it's fewer of those then in between otherwise i mean if it was that case and you know you'd see um you'd you wouldn't see people being able to compete every single weekend over and over again because they would always be injured that kind of thing yeah i think the the thing about injuries too is is like you kind of mentioned is it 
something that's going to keep you out for a couple of weeks versus months mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah. You know, what's the severity of injury? So injuries occur. I think um, going into competition too, there's a fear of the unknown, <clears throat> you know, and, and in practice, if somebody catches you, they might release you if they're upper belt and they kind of know what they're doing. They mm-hmm. feel like they got you, you know, you're done dead to rights. They'll, they might let go yeah. or say, all right, let's reset. So I think there's a fear of an unknown there as far as injuries uh, go. Um, severity of injuries, the thing I've got a little article here. I'll, I'll kind of go over as well okay. once we kind of get into it, but like um, Chewy, so what do you, I mean, let's, let's get into it. Like what, I mean, the majority obviously spent more, most of our time sparring mm-hmm. or training uh, much less. So it does make sense that more injuries are going to occur, you know, just because we spend so much time, you know, in training. As far as like you know overcoming this fear of injury like what are we oh overcoming the fear so if, yeah. if it's fear i mean like this this is my thing like first off if if you're going off of this person i imagine has not competed because you're asking i want to compete mm-hmm. if you are doing something that you've never done or let me, let me go back if you want to do something that you've never done but you're not doing it because out of fear then what that tells me is that you're just finding a reason because it's kind of scary and new and we do this for everything. Yeah. Input situation, and we will find a reason not to do it because anytime we are faced with a unknown outcome, right? I mean, this could be anything. You can just think of just like just all sorts of random situations. Anything that gets you gets you going a little bit that has an unknown outcome, our bodies are 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 like on a, on a deep level want to avoid that situa- situation. So what did it, what does it do? It just says, well. There's um there's a situation that's coming up. I don't know what to do. Let's try to avoid this. We shouldn't go there because this could happen. This could happen. This yeah. could happen. And so it leads to those things. And then we try to find stuff that tries to confirm that. Oh gosh, I better not do this. Which is why I talk about the internet because th- those videos get so viral, right? You know, because everybody's seen the leg break at the worlds, right? Yeah. So it's you, then you're like, oh yeah, look at that. See, and that gives you a confirmation. Oh, I shouldn't do this competition. Look, look, look what happened to that poor guy. Mm. But again, that's just you being afraid. It's probably not going to happen to you. And you should face the fear. I feel like, you know, in most cases, whenever you're reacting out of fear, if it's like a real fear that's based on experience and real understanding as to what's going on, yeah, you definitely need to like be be mindful of that. But if it's fear because you're just afraid of a situation that lots of people are doing and everything's fine, but it's something you really want to do. Well, then there's a problem, right? Like if you if you have a fear of being in a really bad neighborhood and you're walking down a really dark alley, well, yeah, maybe you should be afraid of that, right? Like, I mean, because, and, but you probably don't have some deep desire to do that either. Yeah. But doing something where I really want to do this, it's like, okay, example, starting a business. Everybody wants to do a business for themselves, right? It's pretty darn scary to do it you, it is you've been there before right oh yeah and the, the things that you have to deal with it's scary stuff saying yeah i want to go into this place where i have no idea how this is all going to work out i'm going to you know step out on a financial limb <sighs> right a lot of unknowns it's scary and you can find a million and one different reasons as to why you don't want to do it and you could not do it but in a lot of cases it's like there's something there because you want to do it you have the desire and so for a competition especially I think there's so much to uh, to be gained from it by stepping in there and facing your fears. Because if you're a person that maybe is generally fearful of things and you avoid doing things because you're fearful, sometimes it's just good to like go out there and do it. And like, look, I, I was afraid to do this and I did it anyway. And look what happened. You know, like I came out, I'm fine, whatever. I didn't, I wasn't injured. Maybe I even won a match. Yeah. Right. And that can be a cool thing for the person. So I, you know, my thing is, is you, you don't want to operate from a place of being fearful you know, with, with these sorts of things, there's, there's a time where operating with fear. Uh, it can be a useful things like you're being shot at by someone with a, a weapon or whatever that stuff, hundred percent. Right. But when we're talking about a very, like a safe contained situation like this, where in the most cases people do not get hurt and you can look at it objectively and see that, that most people are not getting horrifically injured in competitions. Yeah. Then you just have to look at this objectively and say, I'm just being afraid because I'm scared. And then you just you need to go face it anyway. Yeah, let me let me do this with like the so there's a research article I just okay. kind of wanted to share. It was more of a basically like a questionnaire that was sent out. Mm-hmm. And it's called injury patterns, risk factors, and return to sport in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Basically, a cross sectional survey of 1,140 athletes. So they had people 
they sent them questionnaires they mm -hmm. filled it out so um now injuries are pretty re like prevalent in in jujitsu oh yeah and what they said was that within a three-year incidence um there was like two out of three people reported an injury that at least lasted two weeks yeah of course so because like, i mean yeah. shoot i mean like i was injured in with my first year and i had some like little tweaks yeah you know stuff where i couldn't train for like a week or cup two right or right weeks, so it said um you know 1052 injuries recorded mm -hmm. out of 784 athletes so i mean so th they said basically um the predominant sites you know were like the the arm obviously or the shoulder shoulder and the, knees and the knee. yeah <clears throat> yeah but the the main thing was that um most injuries occurred during sparring and so basically you know it wasn't drilling wasn't you know there are some some instances like takedowns were also uh you know part of where injuries occur because there's a lot more kind of things going on well i also think with takedowns too i think another problem with takedowns is that most gyms don't train them enough yeah which in turn means that they're not properly prepared for those things because if you take a if you take someone that doesn't have a lot of experience and you throw them in the ground and tell them to roll full speed they can get injured really quick and the more education you give them with that particular area the less injuries they have now i can't say that that's all those people but right. i know that there's a lot of injuries with takedowns because people aren't prop like taught properly how to do them enough to where they have enough experience with them yeah i think so you're talking about you know one thing i was kind of as we were talking about these questions or, or or this specific topic i was like number one that popped in my head was exposure experience exposure well okay if you are um uncertain or unfamiliar with a position or a stand up or takedowns exposure so you got to get that that work in the gym I mean, you have mm -hmm. to get you know you have to work that stuff on a consistent basis yeah i would be interested it would be it would be a cool thing i mean obviously they didn't do this but it would be a cool thing to see okay you got injured during takedowns you got injured during leg lock um entanglements or whatever how often does your gym work those things you know it would be interesting to see what the correlation would be there like okay people that work takedowns less got hurt during takedowns more or it didn't matter or whatever. I would just be curious to see what those kind of results are just because from a coaching standpoint, I just see that like, again, leg locks were a big one. We when back in the day, we would have routine injuries from leg locks. And the more that we work leg locks, the less injuries we've had. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, here's another thing. Most of the knee injuries were meniscus injuries. Very common mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, we're so twisting and like, yeah, that's common. Tightness but, and joints. But a lot stuff. of a lot of that stuff, those aren't surgical. Many cases they are not surgical. You have a little meniscus tear. It's OK. No problem unless it's like mechanically locking or catching. So so that that's kind of one of those things to think about. And then um, they said most injuries during sparring which is like 77.6 percent and then 29 percent were during submissions and 26.4 percent were during takedowns mm. so obviously somebody has a submission locked in on you mm. boom and then the takedowns were kind of because i think there's a lot of like you said there's not a lot of familiarity there so if you're not good at takedowns or you're you know because a lot of times it start from the knees like why do we start from the knees right or why do we start down like maybe have somebody starting up and somebody down that's more of a realistic you know situation where you may end up when you because somebody can pull guard for yeah, example yeah. that's kind of what i'm saying um that surprises me about the 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 submissions though yeah but i've i mean i've seen it happen but like i've never been injured i've never been injured from a submission mm -hmm. and i don't think that i've ever injured someone from a submission yeah and, but you got to think about it too though this you got to take this these studies with a grain of salt they're asking people within three years span of you course, have to remember yeah. and go back to oh well it happened while i was doing this you can forget of course, no, or, of course of do course. you know what i mean but like well, right i know I, I know it's like one of those things but it just it's it's strange that you had that many people because i mean for the most part i feel like submissions are one of those points where most people not always i've said because i've seen injuries happen sometimes like where people get into they're just going and then someone maybe sits back on an arm bar too fast and the other person's still moving but for the most part most of the time when you have a submission on someone people become hyper aware of what they're doing more than any other time and it really everything kind of slows down to it like this point and i feel like most people their good training partners are far more like like watching and they're far, far more cautious with yeah. how far they take it opposed to you know when you're going really hard you're putting some squeeze on someone right opposed to you get that arm break okay slowly extend mm -hmm. this thing you mm -hmm. know that kind of thing well yeah i think there's i've been injured uh on uh getting submitted because mm -hmm. i didn't want to tap you know yeah. honestly purple belt whatever and i've also i did have i remember i was like a blue belt 
there was a blue belt from another i don't know who it was mm -hmm. but like i got him like in like maybe a knee bar or something yeah. and they twisted oh yeah yeah and they twisted and they like mm -hmm. I mean, I assume they injured themselves because it didn't sound great. Right. And that was an exposure issue. I, I 100%. Because, that, because they shouldn't out. twist it out. Well, yeah. because you shouldn't twist that of an E-bar. It's the wrong, wrong thing no, to do. No, you don't just yeah. <laughs> start twisting. So I think like, you know, obviously exposure education, that type of thing. Um, and then like, I mean, I know that going on with exposure is like high intensity training. Like, I think you have to start with, you know, like we've done some things in the gym that I think have been very helpful, which is like kind of simulated in-house tournaments or simulate, you know, points or whatever, like mm -hmm. the tournament you're going to be doing. You need to train that specific environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's that's huge. Yeah, I mean, it's it's important to have some some experience with like a, a high intensity where you know what you're getting into because you don't want to go out there. The thing is, is competing is not going to feel like a role. It's no. it's going to it's way more intense. It just is. And when, once you're used to it, it's completely OK. But, you know, one of the things to to help out with that is to uh, like one of the things we've done is compete or is to have like a little in-house competition. Just putting uh, uh, the, the idea that this is an in-house competition. This is not a regular day of rolling. This is a competition and there's going to be a winner and a loser. And you put those sort of things on there. All of a sudden the match has changed. Like I've seen guys where I, there was one example of this. I had these two guys were rolling uh, purple belts at the time. And maybe in a purple blue, but I think it's pur purple welts. And w like purple belt A generally got the better purple belt B. All of a sudden, we're putting there's a match. It's a match now. Mm -hmm. you know, like whatever. And it flipped because purple belt A just mentally, like, he even told me, it's like, man, mentally, I was just like, I got all like, I, I got like just weirded out by yeah, it. And all of a yeah. sudden, I got, I, I, you know, zapped my energy. And because I was trying to win, you know, all these things. And so it's different. And so, you know, you want to play around with that place, um, uh, that that kind of intensity at some point. And it doesn't mean that you're being reckless or dangerous or anything like that. It just means you're trying to be far more assertive on the person. And uh, so, you know, maybe doing a little in-house match with some some of your teammates and stuff like that could be a way to, t to touch on it. Because, again, if you can go out there and like one surefire way to possibly get injured is to go out there and just, you know, mm. no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah, just come out there and think they're going to be like a nice role. And then also they grab a hold of you and just ragdoll you. It feels different. It definitely feels different. Like I always am surprised at like when I've when I've competed, like how people feel strong. Mm -hmm. but I think it's a lot of that nervous uh, energy. And you're like somebody grabs you and like you're not used to somebody grabbing you with that mm -hmm. kind of intensity. And you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. What, what, what was that? Like, I haven't felt that, you know, and so I think having that kind of um that type of intensity with the role mm -hmm. having kind of like somebody grab you or pull on you kind of kind of aggressively it can kind of jar you a little bit yeah, kind of yeah. you know make you feel a little like oh my god what am i into um but like the other things like you know i think you were kind of chatting about is having a game plan mm -hmm. like we were kind of getting into that if you have a game plan i think that that eases eases some of the anxiety a little bit like because you kind of have a, almost like i have a roadmap for what i need to do or what i want to do so i don't go in there my brain's just like oh I'll do whatever game plans help and you know even having that experience like that's something i always tell people you just mentioned it and i i, I just that, that was it's a good point whenever you compete you're going to have someone feel really strong I, it just every every match i've ever had i lock up with a person and I'm like, whoa, that <laughs> just well, shocks you a little bit. I take bit. that back. <laughs> Not every match. I've had a couple matches where. Well, maybe like every tournament or if you have multiple matches. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every match of every, but there's been a couple where, you know, and, and this is, I, I don't mean to be mean with this one, but I've, there was a couple matches where I think people had a uh, fake ranks on, you know, where they were in fake. Really? Belt. Yeah. I, I rolled with, like, there was one guy I rolled with this, like a black belt. And I was like locked up with them. And I mean, it was. I could just feel there was nothing there because you know I'm used to huh. I'm used to locking horns with a fellow black belt and you're like all right this is battle you feel a little tension you, you there, feel some yeah. tension and they club you over and then you club them over the head and you go back and forth whatever or you grab a hold of the geese and you're yanking each other around and I lock up with this guy and I was like huh it's like there's I can move this person around any which way I want but whenever I get into like a that initial battle on the feet in a competition. I always remind myself that the person's going to feel strong. Always remind myself they're going to feel really mm. strong because it can get in your head. 
you know, even, or even if you guys ever roll with like a brand new person that comes in your gym, you might roll that person. And you're like, God, this guy's so strong. Am I getting weak? What's wrong with me? Yeah. You know, and it's, it's not that you're not strong. It's just, I mean, you know, you're probably plenty strong. If it's a new person, they're probably just giving everything that they got opposed to conserving their energy, you're pacing themselves. And then in a competition, everybody's going to feel strong. They're just going to, they're going to be coming at you with, with everything they've got. So they're going to feel strong, you know, and it's just the way it is. You, you, I mean, you, you, I'll do an absolute division and I'll go up against a guy that's a little guy and be like a little, like 140, 45 or, you know, 45 pounder. I'm like, man, this little, this little guy's strong. Mm -hmm. Of course he's strong. He's competing. He's going after me. And so that's something to remind yourself. If you, if you're new to competing and if you're all nervous and afraid of everything else, when you lock up with someone, they're going to feel strong. Don't let it bother you anticipate that that's just sort of a side note mm -hmm. yeah um and then like I, another point that i had was just basically like if you're not like in the you know if you're a white belt this is your first tournament like don't it's it's not the world's like yeah. if you get caught just, just tap like i mean you don't have to sit there and eat it i mean if you know you're you can get out or you can kind of take a little bit of a joint yeah. lock and you're not in any danger you know i think that's obviously you've seen that kind of stuff like gordon ryan and that everybody always remembers of gordon ryan and um oh shit, what's his name craig craig jones that's yeah. right he got him in that they were doing that ebi and he was in that arm bar and he kind of you know, he was he was in a rough rough spot he was very deep well then and recently uh gordon said he got his ankle uh, right. he got his ankle popped yeah pop, ankle popped from a uh, nicky rod yes and uh so you know in that that said so but look at the level those guys are at mm -hmm. and they're they're what they're battling for. They're not battling for like, you know, white belt or blue belt title. Yeah. They're battling for something that has, you know, monetary significance to their life. And so when you're when you're comparing that, that's something to remind because you, you see um, you'll see this a lot of times where people will mm -hmm. watch the highest level stuff and they'll mimic that. Right. And some of that stuff is good to mimic, you know, but some of it's not so good to mimic. If a high level black belt fighting in the ADCC or some comparable level of competition decides that they're going to let their arm break to fight, yeah, that's different than you being at like this little regional white belt tournament saying, nope, I'm tap or snap. I'm going to keep fighting. You tap know, or snap, baby. Yeah. You know, it, it, you got to, you got to take care of your body because you only get one bucket of bones to take on this ride. And especially with jujitsu, all this stuff that you're doing is cumulative, cumulative, right? So like, let's say that you get it popped. Okay. You're young. Heels up. It's okay. Well, you keep doing that. That stuff sticks with you. And when you start to get into your thirties or if you're in your thirties and get into your forties or in your forties, well, you, you already know that's going to be a problem because you're not going to heal up from this stuff. <laughs> you're uh, not, it, nope. Yeah. It's different. But if you're young to the training and you keep doing this over time, you're going to build up all these injuries. And then it comes, there comes a point where your body is just, it, you're broken and you just, you have all these old injuries and they didn't go away. Because they, some, in, uh, to me, the way I look at it now is some injuries go away. Some of them just kind of like they hide for a while. And then later on, they come back because, you know, you did damage to your body. And as you get older, that I don't know the mechanism. But, you know, all of a sudden, like, whoa, your, your knee doesn't straighten out all the way. Like, that's one of mine. If you guys ever meet me or if you've ever watched one of my videos where I kind of I kind of sway back and forth. Um I've always had a bit of a waddle anyway, mm -hmm. even when I was younger, uh, before my knee was messed up. But with my knee, one of my knees doesn't fully lock out. And part of the reason why is because, again, I was young, stupid, and just didn't really care. And so, you know, my knee was jacked up. I finally got it operated on, didn't do enough physical therapy, started competing within a month of my surgery for my meniscus. And, you know, re-injured at that tournament, but kept going, kept training all the time, whatever. Put a brace on it, put a, put a knee pad, I'll be fine. Yeah. And then I lost some degrees of uh, extension in my leg. Um, you know, and I, I, it's not terrible. I get by just fine, whatever. But I've also talked to like, you know, like Leah, you know, mm -hmm. same thing for her. Yeah. You know, like young meniscus tear could have been a complete whatever. but been different, yeah. Could have been different. But instead, what did you do? Uh, I, I'm fine. I'm young. I don't feel it. I'll be fine. And then what happens? It, it builds up. And so you, you don't really, you don't you don't really just come back from those things in the way you think they just resurface. And so if you're going to allow your body to be damaged in that sense on your own accord, like letting something break, you want to decide to do that like later on when there might be some significance to it. Maybe. Yeah. If you decide to, I mean, I'm not going to, I, I got caught in an knee bar at the worlds by one of the other black belts, super tough guy. And that sucker caught me in my bad knee. So he caught me in my leg. that doesn't fully extend. Yeah. 
and I and I know what's going to happen. So people, you become used to people like a um, what's the word? You become used to a standard. Let's say if you have a guy with an armbar, you probably expect that person's arm to be able to fully extend to a straight, right? Not bending back, but straight. Right. Some people's arms don't bend back, like Big Rich. Yeah. Like yeah. if I get Big Rich in an armbar, he has to tap early because his arm doesn't fully bend, right? Because he has an old injury from there, and that that joint in the elbows just doesn't fully lock out all the yeah. way. And my knees like that, so I was like, man, this guy's gonna fully pull to a straight, and if he pulls my knees straight my knees gonna be jacked and the other thing that could be jacked is your hamstrings your hamstrings could be jacked if he overextends so yeah think when you're limited on your range of motion uh -huh. of your of your knee oh yeah my, my, my then, hamstrings then your aren't hamstring muscles aren't used to extending that's they're, right they're that's not right. used to being straightened like that so you have your leg locked out uh -huh. and now you're extending it you're overextending your knee where it's not used to going so you're also putting a hamstring. stress on the hamstrings the tendons that. so it would have been been bandies so what, what did i do he got it he got it so fast i couldn't tap I went, ah, I made a verbal, I made a verbal tap. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, he goes, oh, my friend, I'm sorry. He, he got up, he's super nice. He's like, dude, I'm sorry. I didn't mean yeah, to. Yeah. I was like, no, no, it's fine. My knee's okay. But that, that one's a bad <laughs> knee. And I, was, yeah. I, I don't want it to be hurt, you know, because I want to train tomorrow. Right, right. Um, you know, and so again, there's no shame in it. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, protect yourself in the gym and protect yourself at all times. And also don't be afraid to, to just give in and just say like, look, you got me play tomorrow yeah you know i had a question uh somebody had asked me a question about like what did i think of all the taping that was like on the adcc a lot of these guys a lot of these athletes the second day were coming and held these joints taped ankles uh -huh. knees i was like look i was like you know taping is whatever like but but what do you they basically they're like what do you think about all this stuff why were they coming back and i was like look they're fighting this is like the the crowning achievement this is like the world series this is like they're willing to let their stuff break mm -hmm. to get injured to change in a sense change their lives in some ways you know they're really yeah. they're they're willing to do that and like you have to decide if that's kind of something you want to do that's their livelihood yeah. um you know and th that's two ways to think about it's your livelihood so do you want to be able to fight another day if you don't have a, a great performance and you get caught in something or do you want to try to eke it out and try to eat it and then work past it maybe get the victory yeah i think it just depends but like i don't recommend like you just slap slather a bunch of tape on your on your leg and and go on and get out there um if you're not healthy like i think it's just it's something to think about well and also too a lot of people don't realize how hard they're going like you can appreciate oh man look how whatever they're going but you can't feel what that person's feeling and you probably don't realize how hard they're going and how rough they feel the next day after that first competition yeah. i mean do you you after a competition you will literally feel like you're almost broken um, I mean, I remember like after my ADCC trials matches where I had six matches in a day. Yeah, it's a lot. So it's a pretty good amount. And some of those matches went into overtime. They were tough matches. Uh, there were six minutes, though, so it wasn't too, too long. But I remember my body had issues, like injury stuff, for like several weeks. Like, my knee was bugging me, and so I had to stretch out. Yeah. I had to back off from training. at, at From Nogi World's or yeah, Nogi, or Nogi Pans 2020, I remember doing that one. And I like, you know, me and one of the guys were like, we're battling on the feet, clubbing the crap out of each other's head and stuff. And I remember like my shoulder was jacked up, like, like the muscle from like, like snapping yeah. down, you know, it gets, it was all jacked up and, and messed up my lifting for a few weeks. And so you just, these, you don't realize what people's bodies are going through. Like everybody likes to look at, I always think about this. Everybody likes to look at what it, they, they see people get the hand raised. They see the person get their hand raised and they, they see the victorious person but they don't know what it feels like to be the person in in the backstage with that hum of the fluorescent light going and the person sitting there and just just feeling like they got hit by a freaking car you know or even i remember mma fights you know you'd see a guy get his hand raised yeah i got my hand raised and backstage he's broke he's like oh god i'm so sore i'm so beat up i'm hurt i got a big black eye can't see i can barely you know i mean it's it's a lot of that stuff and so it's um it's one of those things you don't see that and if you've never in seeing is one thing but feeling it's different if you've ever felt it people will watch a match and they it doesn't look like it's going that fast or whatever but you can look at the the tension that's being used yeah. and how how hard they're squeezing like bro like you're they're gonna feel that mm -hmm. and it just it, it just it doesn't look like it because they're just kind of rolling around on the ground but there's so much being exerted during some of those matches that sometimes they're probably taping just to protect some per part of their body that they necessarily did that didn't necessarily let it break yeah but it just got yanked on or got sore you know yeah so i think like just just making sure i and, and having that fear the the fear of getting injured under control is very important before you compete just because you got to be able to pull the trigger 
because it, there's there's no time to wait in competition. Like you have to be able to pull the trigger in competition. You have to kind of have a game plan and go for it. Because if you're hesitant, you may you may not move the right way. You mm -hmm. may pause. You may get you know freeze whatever. So and that and that can get you injured. Well, and here's one last thing on that idea of fear. We're all afraid at some point. We're all nervous. We all experience fear. We all experience anxiety. I still experience it in some level, mm -hmm. right? Like it's it's still there. Like you, you think after 22 years of competing, you just the damn thing would be gone, but it's not it's still there. You know, like I'll have something bugging me and I'll be like, I wonder if they yank on this or one person catches this or, you know, I wonder if I'll, I'll be okay if this happens or whatever. Or, you know, if I'm coming back from some illness, oh, man, do we, I wonder if something's actually, well, well, I'll be okay after this. Will my body be able to hold up during this competition if I have like five matches or something? You know, all these things go through your head. They're, they're always going to go through your head. The difference is, is you can you can notice the fear and just choose not to like respond to it and you just do it whatever you're going to do that's i mean like that i guess that's the difference from courage right everybody experiences the fear just some people decide that they're going to muster up the courage to push forward and so again at the end of the day if it's something you want to do and you're fearful of it again everybody that's done that thing is fearful of it that's just that's just the way it is Difficult situations are going to be fear. They're going to be fear inspiring. But again, you drum up the courage. You find a reason to why you want to do it. And then you just do it. And the beautiful thing is the more that you do things like that, the more power you gain. I think that's like Ralph Waldo Emerson's thing, right? You do the, you know, like whenever you do the thing, you gain the power, mm -hmm. right? Like you do the things that make you afraid and you gain the power. He, he obviously worded it in a much more eloquent way with his prose. But you do these things and then you gain the power from them. And then what ends up happening is the more times you become afraid, you realize, oh, it's fine. I'm, I'm just afraid. I'm, I'm always afraid about this. That's that's completely normal. Yeah. So so what? Nothing nothing new there. I'm just going to do it anyway. And that's a powerful place to operate from opposed to being sort of contained and being held back from those like self-limiting fears uh, and things that go through your head. Yeah, I think having some fear is healthy. You know, I think it's good. It keeps you a little sharp. Sure. Having some fear is important. I think well, have, it keeps and it keeps you in based in reality because obviously there, you know, you do need to have some fear sometimes because if you're not fearful, there could be a problem because sure. there are dangers in, in front of you. Right. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to the podcast, watching the podcast, wherever you're consuming the podcast. Thank you for being here today. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, it'll be useful to you at some point in your uh your path in jujitsu. Again, guys, if you want to check out any of our sponsors, first sponsor is Charlotte's Web, charlottesweb.com. Promo code is jujitsu20 to save 20% on the order. Again, I encourage you to try out some of their products, see what you think about it. CBD has been a great supplement to add into my routine. I typically take it about 30 minutes before bed, uh, and I feel like it helps. And again, a lot of people get different benefits from it. And so, my encouragement for people is to try it out. And again, if you're someone that's been wanting to try CBD out and you uh, have been worried about it because of the THC content, that kind of thing, check out and do your own research, but check out their daily sports edge product. It's NSF certified sport, which means that if you were getting tested by USADA, they would say it's okay to use their product. Um, so that's kind of cool. But again, do your own research on it to see if it's right for you, but check them out at charlottesweb.com and whatever you buy, use a promo code jujitsu20 to get 20% off. Also, thanks to Matt at Epic Roll for being a sponsor of the podcast and helping us bring our pleasant voices to you. Hello. You can check him out at epicrollbjj.com is the website. He makes really cool gear, rash guards, shorts, t-shirts, merchandise, whatever you want. Anything just related, he makes it. Uh, it's high-quality stuff, cool designs, and I like it enough that I like when I like wearing his stuff, but I also uh, like doing business with him to share, like to do some of his my rash guards and stuff like that. And so, again, if... Uh, keep an eye out for those things as they come up in the future but until then you can check out some of his stuff on his website at epicrollbjj.com and the promo code is jujitsu for 15 percent off and thanks to manscaped for helping us bring our bearded selves to you if you've never checked out their website and you are a man or you're a person that has a man in their life that you'd like to help them step up their grooming game Check it out. Go to manscaped.com. They've got a, a variety of products, everything from trimmers and razors and all the stuff to shave the, the fuzz that accompanies the, the male body. Also, they make a lot of good products like colognes, body washes, things like that, stuff to make you smell good and be clean. And again, everything that I've used from them, I like. Everything that I've used has been, I feel like I'm using a high quality premium product. And I, um, 
I use it. So again, it's like one of those things where, as I've said before, any of the sponsors that end up becoming part of the podcast, I end up playing around with using their stuff because I don't really want to talk. It's really hard for me to talk about stuff I don't use. And so with that, it's like I use their their trimmer to trim my beard and trim just about anything else. I'll leave that to your imagination. Uh, and I also like the way that their cologne and their body washes and stuff like that smell. I think it has a good, clean, manly smell. And again, you can take that for what you will. We're in we're in 2021. And manly. I'm <laughs> mm-hmm. getting old. And I'm becoming an old, uh, grumpy, curmudgeon. curmudgeon man. Back in my day. <laughs> um and also, guys, if you want to support the podcast directly, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast, and you'll get access to a ton of exclusive content that is not released anywhere else. Uh, two pieces of content being a seminar, a full recording of a seminar that I did a couple of years ago that has a lot of cool techniques that I use in competitions. And we've got a really cool stretching mobility uh, for jiu-jitsu uh, seminar sort of class that was about 20 minutes long that Eugene did for some people. So again, it's short enough that if you're not really into stretching and stuff like that, which most people I don't think are, it would be really useful to you because it targets specific jujitsu muscles or muscles that we use a lot in jujitsu to either loosen them up or strengthen them, depending on what's going on there uh, to try to bring a little bit more balance to the body. So you can check that out at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And guys, last but not least, if you want to join my daily email newsletter where you will get a communication from me daily sent to your email inbox, and along with that, get access to three free jiu-jitsu resources. Well, they're not free, but I'm going to give them to you free. But three free resources. One is on game planning. One is on jiu-jitsu drilling. And the other one is on some at-home study guide stuff. So I, I wrote it during the uh, the, the Coco times uh, COVID. of 2020 when uh, everybody was locked down. And people were like, what can I do for my jiu-jitsu when I can't train? And I wrote out some ideas as to what you could do. Uh, it's got a lot of good content in it. So if you want to check it out, you can go to my website at jujitsu.net slash join and get access to it. Um, and again, you'll get my daily email afterwards, which you can read and enjoy or can unsubscribe at any time you want. And uh, guys, I think that's it. So thank you guys so much for being on the podcast with us today and listening. And if you guys have any questions, you can send them to Eugene. Send them to me. Add to the, uh, to the podcast po- uh, Instagram. We've got an Instagram for the podcast directly, so you can do that and send them a DM, or we have an email for the podcast, either one of those. and uh, Or if you're a Patreon member, you get preferential treatment, so if you send it to him, he'll make sure it gets put onto the podcast. So with that said, guys, we'll talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.